Hey. Hi. How are you? It's me, Spence, your host. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to episode 114? 213. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> it's that time of year again. I apologize, everybody. I hope you're doing well. So nice of you to show up to hang out for a little while. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. You look great. You look well. You look fine. I hope uh, I hope that rash cleared. How many times have I done this intro joke? How are you guys? What's going on? Uh, what's what's new? Last week I apologized. This week um, it's going to be longer than f- ten minutes. I can promise you that. But last week I just you know it's just it's that time. It's that time of year. Um, it's got to show up every three to four months. To play on Minecraft. So I hope you guys are doing well. I don't have a ton to talk about. We're going to talk about the Fallout show and. Um, Mantis made a really good point that I feel like we should be honoring that I want to talk about. I want to bring that up towards the end of the program. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, I feel like you guys know this just from watching the show, especially if you've been here for a minute. I'm a very inquisitive person. Like, I just like asking questions. I remember at a very young age being told, never stop asking why. Uh, just never stop asking questions. And for some reason, I took that super, super, super to heart. So I'm at work and I'm told, hey, they need help in the other side of the building. I kind of give them this look like you don't pay me to work on the other side of the building. You pay me to work here. And they're like, stop. Come on. I'm like, all right. How many how long you want me there? Like, just go over there till noon. Right. So I'm there and I'm, I'm helping out me and this other this, this, this guy I work with. Nice guy. Good kid. We're over there doing our thing. And this other kid comes in. Right sweetheart of a kid like i need to preface with with this an absolute sweetheart of a human really nice guy very eager to talk very much into anime and sonic the hedgehog very autistic not that it matters kyle just to paint a picture you know, the tendencies. I'm not saying that, you know, there's anything wrong with autistic people or anything. Just, you know, you you know, the pic, there's a picture in your head. Slim kid, good guy, right? And he comes in, he's got a name tag on. We don't wear name tags at work. So I'm looking at him going, what you got that name tag on for, homeboy? And I didn't say anything. But much of his ilk, much like his ilk, I should say, He's like, oh, you probably noticed. And he points to his little name tag and he's like, I'm a member of, uh, uh, what are they called now? I want to say it correctly because I don't want to disrespect these people. Um, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormons. The 2020, they changed the name. They didn't want to be associated with the name Mormon anymore. I don't know why. They still accept people calling them that, but they don't go by Mormons themselves. They go by members of of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is too many ofs. You could throw a colon in there somewhere and clear a lot of this up. Anyway, you tell me you're a religion that I don't know anything about. And I want to talk to you. Like, I just want to know, like he's telling me about, he's like, yeah, I'm on a mission. And like, God calls upon me and says like, this is what you have to do. And he told me that I had to do a service mission. So I work and I service the community in that way. I'm like, that's really cool. And I was like, but why? Because I said to him, I said, oh, so you're on the mission before he even said anything. Because I know like they go around the world to spread the word of uh, Jesus, their, their, their interpretation of the Christ. And I'm like, so where are you? Are you originally from Utah? Because it's right here. If I wanted to go to the Great Salt Lake, it's like a 15 hour drive. And he's like, well, yeah, originally I'm from Utah, but we moved here to Colorado and we're here now. And my dad's in the military and this and that. And he's telling me everything about him just everything about him and he tells me he's mormon like i said and the kid i'm working with uh he knows how much i love fallout and i looked at him and i was like i am super excited to talk to this young fella (laughs) and i will be bringing up graham shortly so get ready for like by the rivers of babel yea we wept as we remembered like get ready for that because that's gonna happen and we're talking and talking. And then he got into like, we got off the topic of religion. I was like, I was like upset for the first time in my life. I like wanted to talk about religion. And he's like, yeah, well, this and that. And then he's like, you guys like anime? And I'm like, no. The old Tezuka stuff, maybe. I really like Astro Boy. Bo, 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 rips. That's about it. 
But the, the, the other guy I was working with is a big anime nerd, a weeb, if you will. So they were talking for a bit. And I just, I like, and at one point it kind of got like a lot. Like he was just kind of a lot. Like it's constant. Like, do you want to hear this? You want to know that? You this, that, this, this, this. He's like telling me like his dad's favorite movies. Sweet kid. And we like got away from religion and then we got back to religion. And he's like, yeah, my nephew's actually going to go. Oh, pause, rewind. The point I'm getting at is I looked at my buddy who I was working with, who's not the Mormon. And I'm like, you know, he's probably one of nine kids. Mormons have a lot of children. And he probably doesn't have any of his vaccinations. (laughs) So like, you know, he just wants someone to talk to. Let him talk for a little bit. So we're sitting there, we're hanging out. But He's telling us, and I'm like, I'm like, so is your church, is it a priest? Is it a bishop? Is it a pastor? And he's like, oh yeah, it's this guy and this is his name. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, I like wanted to sit, I want to sit down with like a religious figure of every religion and record an interview and just kind of be like, what do you believe in? Why do you believe it? And why do you think that that's right over every other thing? Like, why would a a Muslim think that the Quran is more correct than the Bible or the Torah or the Book of Mormon or what have you? Or really anything. Taoism, like any, any, like I'm super, and I kept saying to my buddy, the non-Mormon, I kept saying, I was like, you know, this is his culture. In America, we really don't have culture. Like you could go to any other part of the world, like when I was in France and they have their own culture, that's French culture, Parisian culture, Italy, Spain, Germany, Austria, uh, other parts of Europe that aren't like hella white, like, you know, go to any part of Asia. It's their culture where in America, it feels like the culture that we give out is pop culture. It's not, not that that's not real culture, but it's not like an ethnic culture. It's very much a, Hey, uh, here's a Marvel movie. You already know the ending, but you're going to flock to it. Like lambs to the slaughter. You're going to go watch it. You're going to like it. Slut. <laughs> like, it's just shit like that. Like, we 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 give that out. So I want to know what your culture is. I've always been interested in foreign cultures. I think saying foreign culture is, is valid in, in this experience. So I want to know. I want to know what's it like to be a Mormon. I do. And he's like, you know, I'm not on that kind of a mission, so I really don't feel like I can talk about it. And I'm like, dude, I, I get it. But, like, I want to know the basics. Like, I, And, like, he's telling me that his cousin's going to go spend, like, two years in Germany. That's a long-ass time to live. And he was telling me that his dad is, like, a linguist for the uh, for the military because he did time in Taiwan. Like he did his mission in Taiwan to bring the Book of Mormon to the Taiwanese people. So he learned Mandarin. He learned Chinese. I don't know what the official language is there, but like the language of the Chinese people, of the Taiwanese people, which I guess Taiwan, they speak Mandarin because Taiwan is the kind of the same with Tibet where it's like it's its own country. But I mean, me just saying that Taiwan is its own country right now, even though uh, YouTube isn't allowed in China. They'll never air me ever again. Like Taiwan's its own country. Tibet's its own country. Like these are just things that seem like facts. Um, you know, cause they want to put like trains through Tibet. I want to go to Tibet. I do. I really do. Uh, there's a program in, in Japan where you can like pay money, which is funny to me to go spend like an authentic experience with monks. And I really want to do something like that. Cause like a lot of monks, um, at least the Buddhist monks, their whole thing is the want for not. And as someone who collects things, I wish I didn't have that want. I wish I didn't have that desire. The only desire should be the desire to not want things. I feel like I'd get, a, I, I feel like I get a lot out of Buddhism, but I just, I just, I'm too old to be switching religions. <laughs> uh, anyway, this dude, this dude's a nice guy. He's a fine, fine fella. And just, it was nice to have, it was nice to have a conversation, honestly, where I work is kind of desolate, not desolate in the sense of like, there's barren wastelands, but it's just kind of open and there's no real sense of community. And like the people that work there are old and there's a few of us young whippersnappers 
so like I'll sit down next to some fellow young people and I just want to talk. <laughs> I'm just like, how are you doing today? Tell me about you and your interests. But Mormons are cool. I feel like they get a lot of bad rap. And like I was talking to somebody at work from them and they're like, oh yeah, all I know about Mormons is from South Park. And I'm like, yeah, dude, a lar- large majority of what I know about the, the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is through Fallout and South Park. But like, you know, it's not just like dum, 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 like that episode. Like, you know, that's somebody that's somebody's belief system. Like Scientology is probably not 100 percent accurate. I think I can say that. Uh, but I would say that about every religion, more or less. Uh, but like, if someone told me that they were a Scientologist, I wouldn't be like, you're dumb and you should feel dumb. I'd be like, tell me about that. Tell Because people like to talk about themselves. I have a podcast, hi. Uh, and it's me talking to a camera. It used to be me and a friend talking to a camera, which actually, now that I think about it, hold on, I get it. People want to express themselves and share themselves. I, I don't tell a lot of people that I know. A lot of people, a lot of my friends out here don't know that I have a podcast. I like to keep it kind of on the DL. Not that I'm ashamed of it. I'm actually very proud of it. It's just one of those things where um, it's very vulnerable. It's me putting myself out there. There's there's someone I work with who like heard and was saying that they were they had a friend who was starting a podcast or they wanted to do it. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. It's, you know, what I've heard. And they were like, yeah, I've heard that too. They're like, you have one, right? And I was like, how do you know? They're like, oh, I heard someone talking about it. And there's only maybe two or three people at my job that know about it, but we all share common interests. So I thought I'd tell them. I didn't expect them to listen. But if if the person who I'm referencing hears this, hello, hi, uh, <laughs> um, how are you? Uh, but it's nice. It's nice to get to – I think it's nice when you get to share anything with anybody, be it something vulnerable, be it – be it something that you're passionate about. When I when I went to France and I met my aunt, I got to see her apartment, and that was something that I was I thought was really special because I really wanted to see what a Parisian apartment was like. So, I guess the point I'm getting at is the Mormons are okay. Whatever religion you subscribe to is fine. Just tell people you love them. But also, something I didn't really want to talk about, and it just hit me now. I'm recording this on. 8322 baby. So this will come out on four is Thursday, five is Friday, eight six, right? This will come out on eight six. And that means I have officially be, been doing this show for a year by myself. Um yeah. Damn. Shit, okay. It's kind of like hitting me as I say it. I've been noticing that about myself a lot lately. Things don't hit me until I say them, which I don't know what that means exactly, but like I said something the other day and like I wanted to cry just because it was like, wow, that like made sense to me that like it hit a nerve. But like, yeah, if you've been here, if you met me, if you met me prior to a year ago, about a year ago or somewhere in between, thank you for uh, being here regardless of when you got here. Um, this has been, wow, it's a year. That's 52 episodes, 50 something episodes. That's nuts. I just, uh, like, I didn't even, like, as I was saying that before in the previous little segment piece, it hit me that like, you know, and Kyle's here. Like, it's not like I'm completely alone. Kyle shows up. And last I heard, um, he was being moved out of Neo Vietnam because of the thing I had sent him or I didn't send him and said that. I don't know what happened either way. Either way it's somewhere and it's happening and it's going to be the, I don't know. He's okay. We've been talking very sparingly because of communications, but yeah, it's been a year already. I was in a different place. I was in a different headspace for various reasons, but I was at a different job uh, I was in a different rotation of friends as far as I'm concerned. It's been a year. You know, enough of the, I didn't want to come off as pessimistic. It was me more of just seeing that a passage of time had happened. Um, the older I get, the more I just appreciate the, the, the witnessing of a passage of time. It's, it's more to me that I'm lucky enough that I got to see it 
and got to understand it and to have learned from it than it is really that I even went through it. Like going through something sucks, but the lessons you will learn along the way are, are they, insurmountable. It's so much better. I love learning things. Like I love learning lessons. Like I feel like currently I'm going through some shit right now that I will learn from, but I feel like that's all the time. Be it good, be it bad. Anyway, thanks for being here for a year. No, longer. I mean, I've been doing this for three, four years. 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. No, 2019 is when I, I don't even remember the year I started. Baby Frank's had a couple birthdays. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sticking by me for the year. I'd like to get into the lore. I have a piece written. I have to go grab my notebook in just a moment. But before I do that, I have to thank the Patreon because of you guys, your love and support. I continue to do this starting from the top. I have to thank the OG Noah. Thank you, Noah. After Noah, I have to thank Danny. Thank you, Danny. After Danny, we have to thank Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. And last, but certainly not least, I have to thank TP. Thank you, TP. Thank you for all of your support and all of your love. I appreciate you guys so, so very much. But now it is time to get on to the lore. So I normally ask a question. I know I did it last week too. Every day I was waking up, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, waking up going, all right, just go on Discord and ask the question. And if I don't do something the second I think of it, I just forget about it until it's way too late. So this morning, this Wednesday, I woke up and I was like, yo, question. People just submit some stuff. Whoever, uh, just pick, I'll pick one. Just submit what you want to hear. Right? I did it too late. I don't, I, I honestly didn't even check. I didn't even think to check. My memory has been really, really bad. bad. Lately. And I just did one that I wanted to do. You know how much I love the original Fallout. Uh, the OG, the thing that sets up everything, the thematics, the atmosphere, all of that. So if you want to hear any lore whatsoever, make sure you're in the Discord. Because once a week, I will ask a question, hopefully. And first person to get the question right, or gives me something that I like, gets to pick the lore for the week. This week, since I am bad with time management, I picked the lore, and this week's lore is on Lost Hills. <gasps> a firm of Fallout 1. Now, Lost Hills is the bunker, the base of the Brotherhood of Steel around the events of Fallout 1 and prior to late 2077, up until 2161, and then some time after. So it's a code name of a security base. Uh, and it is claimed by Captain Roger Maxon, the first Maxon in 2077, and is the Brotherhood of Steel's headquarters, their base of operation. Now, in November of 2077, the Mariposa Rebellion happens. I don't have in my notes exactly what happens with the Rebellion. It is a topic I'd like to cover one day, but the skinny of it is that Maxon saw what was going on with FEV days before the bombs dropped and said, I want nothing to do with the U.S. military anymore, and was pretty much like, I'm done. Also, I'd like to point out real quick, as I started talking about this, like you'll hear it in my voice if you go back a few seconds. I have the Fallout 1 soundtrack on in the background. Uh, and Vats of Goo started instantly as I started talking about Vats of Goo, which is kind of cool. So he sees this and he wants nothing to do with it. And he's like, what the U.S. government is doing is evil. And I don't remember the exact day, but it's right before the bombs fall. The bombs fall. Maxon kind of takes over Mariposa and is like, the only people allowed in are the soldiers' families. The only people allowed out is nobody. <laughs> it's pretty much locked down. And from... October 23rd of 2077 to sometime in November, uh, they leave. There's the rebellion and they leave. And then there's the exodus from Mariposa. Now, the Brotherhood, what is now becoming the Brotherhood, which is Maxon's crew, his, his tribe, if you will, are going towards Lost Hills. Mind you, this is days after the nuclear holocaust. And here come these giant, stomping... Eight foot behemoths, metallic monks walking through the desert, walking through the visage, the refuse, the debris, all of it, just to get to Lost Hills to find some form of ref, like they're refugees almost. They're trying to find a home. 
Like I said, this is a government security bunker. And because of it being days after the bombs drop, raiders are in abundance. People that were just businessmen are raiders. Because now, like, we, we have reverted back to monkey. And it is you have to kill so you can eat. And... They get attacked and Brotherhood members die. But for every one Brotherhood of Steel member that goes down, two raiders go down. So, you know, their KD's pretty decent. During these attacks, Maxon's wife is killed, but not his teenage sons. Now, there is a sergeant named Sergeant Allen uh, who doesn't agree with what Maxon is doing wholeheartedly and says, maybe we should break off. This is almost like the first batch of outcasts before they were called outcasts. Um, they're not they're, they're not given a name on the wiki. I get all my uh, lore off of fallout.fandom.com, all my reference material. And Sergeant Allen says, we want to break off. We want to go do our own thing. Um, and Maxon's like, don't do that. That's not wise. That's kind of a dumb idea. And Allen goes, yeah, no, we're good. We're going to go. So they want to go check out the West Tech research facility that's in California. And again, Maxon's like, this is not smart. He says, do not do this. They don't listen and they go off in pursuit of what is now referred to as the glow. These men are never heard from again. Now, in 2151, uh, remains of Alan's group is found in the glow. And if I'm not mistaken, when you do the quest where you have to retrieve the item for the Brotherhood in Fallout 1 so you can get access into their bunker, into Lost Hills, the Brotherhood of Steel, or I'm sorry, the soldier that you see with power armor on that is dead is one of Alan's guys, if not Alan himself. So because of all this happening, because of what the Brotherhood stands for, they want to reclaim tech, they want to reteach the wasteland, Lost Hills becomes kind of this bastion, this oasis, if you will, of technology throughout the wastes. They are the number one supplier of weapons and ammo and any sort of manufacturing of weapons before the gun runners pop up. So they had the shit on lock. They were so focused on tech and weapons that they decided they were going to trade with the outside public for food and water and other uh, miscellaneous materials and shit they needed to survive. They thought they didn't need to make it inside of the bunker. Now, by 2162, following the destruction of the Unity, the Brotherhood of Steel actually aided in a lot of settlements getting rid of mutants. And the way they did it, according to the wiki, was not amicable. But uh, they did it in a way where there was not as many casualties on both sides. So there wasn't as many casualties for mutants. There wasn't as many casualties for settlers. There wasn't as many casualties for the Brotherhood. And it was done in a commendable way because of Head Paladin Rhombus, who I'm going to talk a little bit about towards the end of these notes here. Now, they wanted... From a very early time, they wanted nothing to do with any sort of power dynamics. They saw what the NCR was doing and really didn't want anything to do with it. And they obviously didn't want anything to do with the Enclave. Um, but they really wanted nothing to do with power. They wanted to reclaim tech and kind of make sure that what happened in the old world in the before time never happens again. So for years, they stood out of power dynamics. They wanted to slowly reintroduce tech into the wasteland. So the she has working telephones and I believe they might have working computers with like internet. And when I say internet, it's more like land connection. Cause I know in new Vegas, um, S S Michelangelo and Sarah from vault 21 talk via like a rudimentary email. That's essentially like a land thing. They, their focus on tech makes them one of the biggest research houses in all of that new California Republic land. And speaking of NCR, speaking of NCR, the Brotherhood of Steel had very good relations with uh, NCR to begin with. And they also had, they also had uh, Head Paladin Rhombus that I was talking about before. And Rhombus made them, I believe the exact words on the wiki were a zealot. 
of of power they were not to be messed with no one was coming near them he was a very aggressive man he knew he was good with strategy he knew what he was doing people did not mess with the brotherhood of steel now which i think is super interesting the ncr and the brotherhood had very good standing together they never technically become part of ncr but they had a good relationship to the point where one of the settlements one of the states of ncr is named after Captain Maxon. It's named after Maxon. It's just called Maxon. Uh, and like I said, they were never really part of it, but Brotherhood of Steel was known to have done some patrols for NCR, but other than that, they really kind of stood out of it. So because this is an older game, and I like the way the older games are kind of uh, built on how time works uh, in the game and how like levels of things are, I just want to kind of go over what Lost Hills kind of looks like from like floor to floor level one again all my lore fallout.fandom.com the first underground level contains the main supply room filled to the brim with pre-war tech the stockpile while full of technology is rather limited every brother can withdraw only a single set of armor while high tier weapons are only given to those with special clearances from senior paladin tullus opposite of the storage room is a training chamber and then we go to floor two. Two houses the living quarters for the inhabitants, their classroom, and the facility medical lab. The youngest members of the organization spend their time here studying to become either a knight or a scribe. Under the watchful eyes of higher-ranking members, their quarters are quite cramped. Up to 12 initiates share a room, or even more, if hot bunking is used. But is fitted with all the necessary amenities. Level 3 houses some of the Brotherhood's most important facilities, the workshop, where technology is maintained and recreated by knights and the libraries, where the scribes patiently study old blueprints and knowledge, preserving it for future generations. Their living quarters are also located on this level, Level 4 housing the command center mainframe and the elders' quarters. If Level 3 is considered to be the heart, the level four is considered to be the brain of the Brotherhood of Steel. Unlike other members, the leader of the Brotherhood have each their own private quarters. Their conference room is located at the back of the auditorium, used often despite their apparent inability to agree on anything, except that there are four of them. The mainframe processing and storage containing the collective knowledge of the Brotherhood is located out of the way behind the quarters. Access through an airlock, it isn't guarded by anyone, unlike the elders' quarters in a meeting room. Because this is the headquarters, because they're such a closed-off group of individuals, the denizens of Lost Hills are exclusively Brotherhood of Steel members. You get in, the, the, the Vault Dweller gets in, because you have to do a quest for them, but they don't let anybody in. Outsiders are not welcome. And even when you're there, they're kind of like, all right, Wastelander, keep your, keep your, uh, keep your f distance. Just some uh, behind, just some behind the scenes stuff. Lost Hills is a real life location of the same name. Originally, Lost Hills was not a bunker. It was a small concrete building founded by soldiers from Mariposa that employed it as a base and steadily changed it into a fortress. The Brotherhood also had an invasion ending plan where the super mutants march against the Brotherhood and laid siege to Lost Hills 170 days after the game starts. While defending their fortress valiantly, a traitor, Kendrick, would assassinate the elders and sell the Brotherhood to the super mutants. Lost Hills would subsequently be destroyed An unused dead Brotherhood map is still included in game files. That's super neat. Other cut elements, a few non-player characters, including a scribe mourning the Brotherhood's reluctance to explore soft sciences, such as sociology and psychology, a romance subplot including Jennifer, the paladin, another Michael-related subquest about pulse grenades and girls from lower levels, and, and a day and night cycle in the bunker. So that's all I really have to say about Lost Hills. That's the lore. Uh, on one of the cooler, if not the, uh, next to the cathedral is one of the coolest. One of the coolest locations gives birth to what is now, ostensibly, be it for better or for worse, the face of the Fallout series, the Brotherhood of Steel. That was Lost Hills. And that, my friends, you guessed it, is lore.
So for this last third segment of the program, I want to talk about the Fallout show. And I'm incredibly excited, as you probably know, as you might be aware. If you're a casual week-to-week viewer, you probably know. As you probably know, the show's coming out. And we keep getting these leaked pictures. Walton Goggins shared that picture. Um, We keep getting all this stuff about the show coming out. In Staten Island, there's the Super Duper Mart that's being set up. People have been taking pictures of power armor. Uh, There's a picture floating around that's probably behind me because I know someone put it in the Discord of somebody standing with a laser rifle. I want that laser rifle. (laughs) I do. I want to own a piece of the show, especially if it's accurate to the games. But Mantis, and if I, if I, again, I'm not good at finding tweets, but if I can find the tweet, it's here behind me somewhere made a really good point that this is a workplace for these people. Don't sneak onto the set. Don't bother these people. Don't take pictures of people and post them without consent. I get that. This I'm not sure what the rules for New York is. I'm pretty sure Manhattan is a one-way consent state when it comes to photos, video, and audio. Uh, but still don't do it at work. They're not there having fun. They're not, they, they're probably not fans like you and I are fans. They're probably some guy whose job isn't union and it's a temp job and it's really cool that he gets to work on it, but he probably works 16 hour days and it sucks. So to him, it's a job to us. It's, it's, it's a lot. And does it look cool? It looks amazing. Seeing the super duper Mart like real is fucking nuts. Like I really hope that they dig deep into the Fallout Bible and and use the the Brotherhood of Steel or the power armor, I should say. I hope they use the power armor to be very much these hulking mass, these hulking masses in the distance that are kind of kept hush hush. The same way Death Claws are kind of they're like Death Claws, but more well known. Where it's like if you see one run, because we don't know what they are and we don't understand it. Only a few a set of people understand how power armor truly, truly works. They're supposed to be seven, eight, nine feet tall. They're supposed to be like mini mechs. I really hope that gets employed. Like, I really hope that they, they, it's not just, hey, let's put power armor and this and that. Like, I heard, uh, this is, I, this is a, a genuine thing that made me guffaw. The Halo show apparently is so bad. How bad is it? It's apparently so bad that people aren't even calling the Master Chief. Like, it has nothing to, like, it's not Chief from the game. Uh, they're calling him, not calling him John 117. They started calling him Jonathan Halo. Which is really funny because Kyle and I will play Halo together and go, dun, 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 John Halo, dun, 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 dun. and then like they're like, no, dude, it's not even Jonathan Halo, it's Jimmy Rings, <laughs> and Jimmy Rings gets me. Like it's funny, but like I hope this show is everything I've ever wanted and more. But also remember that these are people working, like these are people that aren't fans like you and I are fans. These are people that are doing their job. I want to see Walton Goggins as a ghoul. Uh, there's been a bunch of cool stuff, and I've been hesitant to talk about it because of, like, Mantis making a good point. Like, maybe we shouldn't be sharing this shit because it's supposed to be clandestine. Maybe that's just the way it should be. Maybe we shouldn't, like, yes, some of us have massive erections for this television program that's coming out. Is it justified? Yeah. I think it's really funny that a game that's about corporate greed is being done by Amazon, but, like, you know... It is what it is. Like, it's it's going to be big. But all I'm saying is, like, if you see something, share it in the Discord because it's a private community. But don't lambast it all over Twitter or Facebook if you're still using that or the gram. And, like, I get it. I say this, but I follow uh, a Twitter page that's just about leaking photos from The Last of Us HBO show. I get it. I'm excited for the two show. I never thought I'd be this excited for television. I'm excited for HBO's Last of Us and Amazon Prime's Fallout program. But remember, don't sneak onto these. Th- this set, it's a set. It's a like you wouldn't sneak into a construction site. If if you told me I was going to Staten Island and I can pass it, yeah, my dumbass would probably try to get near it. I'd probably try to sit in one of the cars. I under like in Minecraft. I have to say, like. I understand. I totally get it. I want to see a day of shooting. I would like to see them just shoot B-roll of establishing shots for the series. Because this is what I love. 
but it also you have to respect that these people are at work and what they're doing is a job and isn't, hey, my favorite thing is real and in front of me. I don't know. That's all I really have to say on that. I just wanted to, you know, respect other people, be nice to other people. Uh, if you like the intro music, it's by the one and only Shane Ivers, silvermansounds.com slash free music for all of his heaters. If you throw Feather Duster at the end of that, a slash Feather Duster, you can get the intro song to this program, Feather Duster. Uh, there's a link in the description to my Twitter, Kyle's Twitter, the show's Twitter, the Red Bubble, the Patreon. Thank you to the Patreon. Uh, any way that you support helps, whether it's just you leaving the video a like, a comment, or sharing it with a friend. You could download the show anywhere podcasts can be downloaded. Be good to one another. I love you very much, and I'll see you next episode. I hope you're safe, happy, content, and full. I love you. Bye, everybody. Time to play Minecraft! <laughs> Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Gulman Entertainment Production.